How to self-bandage your feet and legs to reduce lymphedema. This video is meant to be watched after you have been taught self-bandaging from a therapist at the Princess Margaret Cancer Rehabilitation and Survivorship Clinic. Your therapist may change how to wrap your leg and foot based on your medical history or specific needs. You may want to use this video along with the pamphlet, How to Self-Bandage Your Legs and Feet to Reduce Lymphedema. You can find this pamphlet along with other helpful resources at the Patient and Family Library located at the Princess Margaret Cancer Center. In this video, you will learn the following. How self-bandaging helps with lymphedema. How to bandage your foot and leg. When should you wear your bandages? You may need someone to help you bandage your leg and foot. This video will refer to the person who helps you as the caregiver. This video will teach you and your caregiver how to bandage your toes, foot, and leg with layers of padding and compression short stretch bandages. Do not self bandage if you have an infection in your foot, legs, or pelvis. Signs of infection may include a change in the color of your skin that expands or spreads in the area of concern. If your skin tone is pale, the change in skin color may appear red or pink. If your skin tone is dark, the change in skin color may appear darker than is normal for you, red, shades of purple, or gray, or there may be no change in color. Feeling of heat or warmth. An unexplained sudden increase of swelling. Pain in the area. Raised skin around the area of concern. Thickness and pitting. Pitting is when pressure is applied to the swollen area, a pit or dimple will remain. A fever, which is a temperature of 37.8 degrees Celsius or higher. Feeling sick or unwell. If you think you have an infection, get medical help right away. Infections can spread quickly. If you think you have an infection, call or go to your family doctor or nurse practitioner, walk-in clinic. If no walk-in clinic is open, go to the closest hospital emergency department. If you have an infection or other medical concerns, stop bandaging until you speak with the clinician or therapist you saw at Princess Margaret. How self-bandaging helps with lymphedema. Your lymphatic system removes extra fluid and waste from your body. Your lymphatic system is made up of lymph nodes that are linked by lymph vessels. Your lymph nodes are bean-shaped organs that are found all over your body. Lymph nodes may be removed as part of cancer treatment. This can cause a type of swelling that is called lymphedema. If you had lymph nodes removed from the groin or pelvis, or radiation treatment to your pelvis, groin, or leg, then you may have swelling in the area. Self-bandaging is a way to help treat lymphedema or swelling. Wrapping the swollen part of your body with bandages helps move the lymph fluid in the direction of the heart and away from your swollen area. When you do this type of bandaging, you will have more layers of bandages on your foot and lower leg compared to your upper leg. Bandaging this way helps to push the fluid up your leg and into the lymphatic system. The goal of bandaging is to help reduce the size of your swelling, help prevent the swelling from getting worse, help soften swollen tissue that feels firm or hard, after a period of bandaging, when the swelling has gone down, you can be fitted for a compression garment. A compression garment is a tight stocking that is fitted for you to help manage your swelling. Your therapist will give you your first set of supplies. Once you have used your first set of supplies, you will have to buy more supplies at the Princess Margaret Pharmacy or online. 
Your therapist will give you a list of supplies and tell you where you can buy them online. You will need one gauze stockinette, fluffy padding or foam roll to keep the pressure of the bandages even, molalask gauze for toes and ankles, 8 cm, 10 cm, and 12 cm short stretch bandages, short pieces of tape, kidney shaped foam pads, water and soap to wash your foot and leg, towel to pat dry. The therapist will also provide you with a pamphlet called how to take care of your bandages, as some bandages should be washed regularly and some cannot be washed at all. If you lose or misplace your pamphlet, find it at the Princess Margaret Patient and Family Library on the main floor, online, or by calling the librarian at 416-946-5383. Before bandaging, clean the skin on the foot and leg with soap and water and pat your skin dry. Make sure you dry between your toes to remove all moisture. This helps prevent the skin from getting sore or itchy. Check your skin for any cuts or redness. If you do have a cut, wash it well with soap and water, apply an antibiotic ointment, and cover the cut with a band-aid. Put lotion on your skin before bandaging. This will keep your skin moist and help avoid itchiness, soreness, and skin breakdown. Rub the lotion into your skin very well so that your skin does not feel sticky or tacky. How to bandage your foot and leg. There are three steps to follow to bandage the foot and leg. Step one, bandage the toes. Step two, secure the foam for the ankle. Step three, wrap padding around the foot and leg. Step four, bandage the leg. Step one, bandage the toes. Start with a thin gauze stockinette. The stockinette helps to protect the skin. It is important to wash the stockinette after every use. Wash the stockinette in the sink and hang it overnight to dry to prevent your skin from being itchy and sore and from getting an infection. The stockinette will cover the foot but not the toes and stops at the top of your thigh. Pull the stockinette up your leg. Pull the end of the stockinette away from the toes and cut the end off the stockinette. If the stockinette falls down when bandaging, you can tape it to the top of the thigh to keep it in place. Pull the stockinette back to bandage the toes. You are now ready to bandage the toes. Begin with the 4 cm toe gauze and wrap it once around the base of all your toes first. Then wrap the big toe. It is helpful to hold the gauze or bandage roll close to the skin facing upwards. This makes it easier to unroll and helps to get even compression. Start from the bottom of the big toenail and wrap around the toe two to three times towards the base of the toe. Pull the gauze slightly when bandaging the toes, but do not pull it hard. Do not stretch the gauze as you bandage the toe. The big toe will be covered with gauze from just below the big toenail to the base of the toe. Wrap the gauze around the base of all the toes again. Wrap the second toe the same way as the big toe. 
Smooth out the gauze as you go to avoid any wrinkles or folds in the gauze. You may find that you have more control of the gauze if you keep the gauze roll close to the foot. Continue wrapping each toe the same way. The fourth and fifth toes are smaller and can be wrapped together, or you can leave the fifth toe unwrapped. If you have any extra gauze, you can wrap it loosely around the foot. Do not cut the gauze because you may need it the next time the leg is bandaged. When you have finished bandaging your toes, check the blood flow by doing the following test. Press on the big toenail. The toenail should lose some color or turn pale. Color should return after a few seconds when you stop pressing on the big toenail. This means that there is good circulation. If the color does not return to the big toenail after a few seconds, you may have bandaged too tightly. You will need to remove the bandage and wrap more loosely. The toe bandages should feel comfortable and there should be no pain or discomfort. Step 2. Secure the foam for the ankle. If the skin around the ankle is thick and spongy, your therapist may give you two pieces of kidney-shaped foam to help with the swelling around the ankle. To secure the foam shapes, place the foam behind the ankle bones and wrap the 6 cm gauze around the foam using light tension to hold it in place. Pull the socket down over the ankle and foot. Step 3. Wrap padding around the foot and leg. Depending on what your therapist has given you or told you to use, wrap either the fluffy padding or foam roll around the foot and leg. This layer does not have stretch or compression. The padding or foam helps cushion any bones that stick out such as in the ankle or knee. It also protects sensitive areas like the skin over the back of the knee. The padded layer also helps to even out the shape of the leg so the bandages will go on evenly. Start by wrapping the padding or foam around the foot beginning at the base of the toes. Wrap around the foot again, moving closer to the ankle. Cover the whole foot. Smooth out the wrinkles as best you can. Once the foot is covered, continue wrapping the padding up the leg, overlapping the padding by half with each wrap. Make sure the back of the knee is well padded and protected as the skin is sensitive here.
If you were given an extra piece of padding for this area, place it at the back of the knee and wrap the padding over top. Again, smooth out any wrinkles as best as you can. Tuck in the padding when you reach the top of the thigh to secure it. Do not use tape as it may tear the padding. Step 4. Bandage the ankle and foot. You will need the following short stretch bandages. Bandage 1. 8 cm bandage. Bandage 2. 10 cm bandage. Bandage 3. 10 cm or 12 cm bandage. Depending on the amount of swelling you have and the shape of your leg, your therapist may have told you to use a fourth bandage. Bandage 1. 8 cm bandage. The bandages used are short stretch bandages which has some stretch but not as much as a regular tensor bandage. The bandages come with two small clips. Do not use the clips as they have sharp prongs that may injure your skin. Use tape instead of the clips. Surgical tape or masking tape works well. Start with the 8 cm short stretch bandage. This will be the smallest bandage. Try to keep the foot at a 90 degree angle while wrapping. This makes the bandage feel more comfortable to stand or walk in. Keep the bandage roll close and do not pull it away from the skin. This allows for more control of the bandage. Remember to keep the bandage roll facing upwards. This makes it easier to manage and helps to keep the pressure even. It is important to keep the same amount of tension or pull on the bandage. You can do this by keeping an even, consistent tension on the bandage while you are wrapping, or by giving a gentle pull on the bandage at each half turn to keep an even pressure. Wrap the 8 cm bandage around the foot at the base of the toes without pulling. This will secure the bandage. Now wrap 2-3 to three times pulling the bandage across the top of the foot and across the bottom of the foot. Continue with the same bandage across the top of the foot toward the back of the ankle. Wrap around the back of the ankle and across the top of the foot. Remember to give a gentle pull at each half turn or keep a consistent tension on the bandage. Bring the bandage around the bottom of the foot then across the top of the foot, moving the bandage closer to the heel. This is called a figure 8. Repeat this figure 8 pattern around the foot and ankle until the whole foot including the heel is covered. The number of times the figure 8 pattern is repeated depends on how much swelling there is in the foot. When the foot is completely covered, continue wrapping the remaining bandage in a spiral pattern around the ankle. Once above the ankle, continue wrapping the remaining bandage up the lower leg until the bandage is finished. Overlap the bandage by half with each wrap and remember to keep an even tension on the bandage or give the bandage a gentle pull at each half turn for even pressure. Tape the end of the bandage to prevent it from becoming loose. One of the goals of this type of bandaging is to have more layers of bandages on the foot and lower leg compared to the top part of the leg. Bandaging this way helps to push the fluid up the leg and back into the lymphatic system. Bandage 2, 10 cm. Take the 10 cm bandage and once again remove and put the clips in the garbage. Start with the end of the bandage on an angle sticking upwards so it does not poke out from the wrap and unravel. Wrap the bandage loosely above the ankle without pulling it to secure the bandage. If it is secured too tightly, this may create a tight band around the ankle and push the fluid downwards into the toes instead of upwards towards the heart. Wrap the bandage around and up the leg, overlapping by half with each wrap. 
always give a gentle pull on the bandage at each half turn to keep the pressure even. Keep the rolled bandage close to the leg which will also help to keep the pressure even. Remove any wrinkles or folds by smoothing out the bandage. Continue with the same bandage up the leg. At the knee, bend the knee slightly. This will make sure the knee can move comfortably with the bandages on. Wrap the bandage up and over the front of the knee in a diagonal direction. Take the bandage and wrap it around the back of the leg to just above the front of the knee on the opposite side and continue downwards diagonally over the front of the knee to below the knee. After completing this figure 8 pattern once, continue wrapping up the leg until the bandage is finished. Always give a gentle pull on the bandage at each half turn to keep even pressure. Tape the end of the bandage to prevent it from becoming loose. Bandage 3, 10 cm or 12 cm. The therapist will have given you either a 10 cm or 12 cm bandage for the next bandage depending on the amount of swelling there is and the size of the leg. This bandage should be wrapped while you are standing, if possible. This will make the bandages feel more comfortable once they are on. Feel the ankle and the lower leg. Start this bandage where it feels soft and less bulky on the leg as you gently squeeze it. Wrap this bandage in the opposite direction to the previous bandage. For example, if you wrap the last bandage, bandage 2, in a clockwise direction, then wrap this bandage in a counterclockwise direction. This helps to keep the pressure even. Remember to start with the end of the bandage pointing upwards so the end is tucked in. Wrap the bandage around the lower leg without pulling. This will secure the bandage. Wrap again and gently pull across the front and then around to the back of the leg, overlapping by half with each wrap. Continue wrapping up the leg. Always give a gentle pull on the bandage at each half turn to keep even pressure. Continue wrapping to the top of the leg and tape the end of the bandage to prevent it from becoming loose. After applying the last bandage, make sure to once again check your circulation. Press on the big toenail. The toenail should lose some color or turn pale. Color should return after a few seconds when you stop pressing on the big toenail. This means that there is good circulation. If the color does not return to the big toenail after a few seconds, you may have bandaged too tightly. You will need to remove the bandage and wrap more loosely. The toe bandages should feel comfortable and there should be no pain or discomfort. Start with the big toenail. The toenail should lose some color or turn pale. Remember, if the color does not come back within a few seconds, you may have bandaged too tightly. Remove the bandages and apply them again. The bandage should feel snug but comfortable. You should not feel any pain or discomfort. 
it is important to move your leg when it is bandaged. This will help loosen up the bandage so it does not feel so tight. When should you wear your bandages? Moving your leg and using your muscles while wearing the bandages helps the bandages push fluid out of your leg. Wear your bandages for as long as possible during the day and when you exercise. In the beginning, wear your bandages for 2-4 to four hours a day, the first 2-3 to three days that you wear them. This will help you get used to wearing the bandages. Gradually increase the amount of time you wear the bandages over 4-6 to six days until you are wearing them most of the day. Your goal is to wear them all day. Begin to wear your bandages at night after you feel comfortable wearing the bandages during the day. It is important that the bandages feel comfortable before you try sleeping in them all night. If you wear the bandages during the day and night, remember to take your bandages off each day to take care of your skin. Take a bath or shower and check your skin for cuts and areas of redness. Put lotion on your skin. Let the lotion soak into the skin before bandaging the leg. If the bandages slip down or become loose, take the bandages off, roll up the bandages and re-bandage the leg. It is normal for bandages to slide down when you wear them. It may take some time to learn how to self-bandage your feet and legs. It can be slow at first, but gets easier over time and with practice. If you have any questions or concerns, please contact your therapist. If you are still uncomfortable after you rebandage, contact the Cancer Rehabilitation and Survivorship Clinic at 416-946-4501, extension 2363. The therapist will call you back to help you. In this video, you have learned the following. How self-bandaging helps with lymphedema. How to bandage your foot and leg. When should you wear your bandages?